Hey there everyone, this is Danielle, finally getting back to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trilogy. Uh, so last time uh, we were playing Recipe for Turnabout, uh, there it is, part 3 investigation is what we're about to start now, but as you can see, it was September when this file last changed. It is now November. <laughs> so, um, sorry about that. Um, it's just these videos take a fairly long time to do, and this, this case is, you know, a bit frustrating, and it's just been a little hard to commit to, I suppose. Um, but we're gonna do it now, we're gonna dive in and continue the recipe for turnabout. Since it's been a while, you might want to go back and look at the previous video first, just to remember what was going on, but... Eh, we'll see how we go. January 7th, 12.52pm, Wright & Co. Law Offices. So, how do you think the trial went this morning? How do you think it went? It got a bit crazy in there. I just wonder if that killed our chances. Yeah, I guess it did get out of hand. Mr. Kudo's testimony did nothing to help us. Plus, now we don't even know the identity of the waitress who laced the coffee. All we know is what old Mr. Kudo saw, the apron straps and the ribbon. And that the victim was wearing an earpiece when his eardrum was ruptured. Talk about a terrifying case of contradiction-itis. Time to play doctor and find ourselves a cure then, huh? Yeah, we've got to find one for Maggie or she's going to have a terminal case of guilty. Okay, so where we actually want to go now is Trey Beer, and I think we have to go through the detention centre. January 7th, detention centre, visitor's room. I guess Maggie's still in questioning. But, but we've got questions to ask her too. Maggie, Maggie. Keep it down, Maya, this isn't a playground, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, Trey Beyond, here we go. January 7th, Trey Beyond. Empty, as usual. Yeah, and it's lunchtime too. Um, I don't think this person actually has a name. I think it's just like an anonymous customer. So I don't really know how to voice them. Um, that's it. Come on, come on, come on. Hey, that sounds like... Oh, it's Gumshoe. I forgot. <laughs> I thought it was an anonymous customer. Now just call an eight, pal. Come on, I know you can. He's getting really worked up about something. No, that's the wrong number. Ugh. Looks like an eight would have only netted me five bucks anyway. What a ripoff. What's the problem, Detective Gumshoe? Huh? Oh, it's you. I, uh, I was, uh, <laughs> I was just, <laughs> uh, I was just listening to the radio, pal. To the radio? Hey, Detective Gumshoe is having lunch here. He is, and he's having the twin tea set. Uh huh, uh huh. What can I say? This is a nightmare. How am I supposed to look Maggie in the eye now, pal? You really drove her into a corner, you know. You always blow apart my testimony. Why, of all days, didn't you do it today? S sorry, there just weren't any holes in it for once. Yeah, what happened? Usually your testimonies are like Swiss cheese. S Swiss cheese? What do you prefer, crumbly like aged parmesan? 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 I don't know. Anyway, this case has already been ruled on. There shouldn't be any holes left to find. I mean, if the defense attorney didn't do anything in the previous case, there's probably still a lot of holes left to find, right? So, did Maggie say anything to you? Uh, about me, I mean. Well, um, how did she put it again? I can't believe Detective Gumshoe. I hate him, sir. I mean it. I don't ever want to see him again. Something like that. Whoa. Oh, you sad. Please, Detective Gumshoe, I didn't mean... Why? Why is this happening? He's banging his head against the wall, Nick. Oh man, poor Gumshoe. Oh, I guess he's back now. <laughs> so, did you like the twin tea set? I've never paid that much money for lunch before. I was so nervous, my hands were shaking. So, how did it taste? Well, 
For 20 bucks, I guess? I don't know how to describe it, really. It was... delicate. Delicate? You mean you liked it? It didn't taste bad to you? What's the matter with him? Looks like he's thinking. That's it! I've been trying to think of the right word to describe the taste. And I just realized, it's bad! That's it, it tasted bad! <sighs> it's just kind of hard to admit it to yourself when you paid 20 bucks for it, you know? Maybe you should have found out about the price after he'd finished eating. Hey Nick, maybe that's why Glen Elk came here. Maybe he heard about the Super Fierce Twin Tea Set. If by fierce, you mean fearsome. Speaking of Glen Elk, that reminds me. We still hardly know anything about the guy. Why don't we ask Detective Gumshoe what he knows, seeing as he's here? We will. But first, the radio. So, what were you all excited about earlier? Huh? Oh, that's right, you said you were listening to the radio or something. Oh, that? That was nothing. <laughs> I wasn't excited. Come on, Detective Gumshoe. You can tell little old me. What were you listening to? N nothing really. It was just the, um, daily exercise show. Uh-oh. Detective Gumshoe is a fibber. What the? A psyche lock? Ah, <laughs> this lunch special's lobster sure is great. Is he gonna have more psyche locks because that was another lie, or...? <laughs> Then why are there tears in your eyes? Okay, the first thing we want to do is ask him more about the victim. This guy was a real programming genius. They called him the walking computer at the place where he worked. What happens when he crashes though? Does he just stop moving all of a sudden? Mm, he wasn't literally a computer, Maya. <laughs> Anyway, there's nothing between Maggie and the victim. Yeah, that's what we found out yesterday too. Hey Detective Gumshoe, don't you have any information that's a bit more fun? Fun? I, uh... Oh, I know, so if you paid a visit to him Mr. Elg worked yet, you might as well. His workplace? Where's that? A computer firm called Blue Screens Incorporated, or something like that. Sounds like a real stable company. This could be fun, Nick, let's go! Computers aren't really my thing, Maya. We'll be fine. I know all about that high-tech stuff. I wonder about that. It's just around the corner from this joint. You should take a look. A computer firm called Blue Screens Incorporated, huh? We do have to go there, but before we do, we may need to have a bit of a look around. I don't think we have what we need to break the psyche lock yet. Maybe we do, though. Yeah, I think we do actually. Okay, let's go. Psyche lock time. The radio. Alright, Detective Gumshoe, tell me the truth. What were you listening to? No way, pal. Now that you've made a big thing out of it, I'm not gonna tell you. We'll see about that, pal. Considering all the noise you were making while you were listening, it's pretty clear what kind of radio program it was. I'd say it was related to... Lottery tickets. I'm right, aren't I? You were listening to the lottery results, weren't you? You thought you'd try to win big, just like Glen Elk did. Uh, it's... It's like you can see right through me. Huh? I've cracked him already? Yeah, I think- I thought I needed some more information about the lottery, but I think I get it by breaking this psyche lock. See, pal? That's why I said it was nothing. Yeah, that's a very easy psyche lock. I'm usually pretty lucky, so I figured I'd give it a try. What's with everyone in the lottery? So, how did it go? I won 50 cents. It'd be better to win nothing at all than half a lousy buck. I was so mad. Yeah, I know the feeling. I bought the same kind of ticket as Mr. Elg, see? And they've got this special radio show where they announce the winning numbers. 
They even do the drawings live on the air. It's intense, pal. I bet that's what Mr. Elk was listening to on the day he was killed. Yeah. What time is it now? Uh, it's... it's just after 1.30. And the lottery results always broadcast at the same time? Yeah. Look, I got this flyer when I bought the ticket. Millionaire radio flyer ride to the court record. The most thrilling 10 minutes of your life every Monday at 1.30pm. This is gonna be important. Millionaire radio? That sounds cool. I wanna try it, Nick. Then buy a ticket, Maya, with your own money. Rude. Okay, uh, let's go to Blue Screens Incorporated. January 7th, Blue Screens Incorporated. Wow, this place is so high-tech, you can almost smell the electricity in the air. Uh, did we wander onto us like a Star Trek set or something? I mean, look at this. It is a computer firm, Maya, they can't work without electricity, you know. Who are you? Oh, um, uh, hello. I'm sorry, access is restricted to authorised personnel only. This is a computer programming laboratory. There are far too many trade secrets that could be leaked. Wow, what secrets? Everything you see here is classified. No information can leave this building. Understood. Who is this woman? She's like a robot for some kind of whacked edu edumacational show. My name is Lisa Basil. I'm the company director. D director Sh She's human? She seems more like a ghost in a shell. And that thing over her eye? Isn't that the same device as Glen Elg's? That's a DMH, right? Nice try, but it's the other way around, Maya. It's an HMD. All of my programmers here at Blue Screens Incorporated are supplied with HMDs. Then do you write programs too? No, I just enjoy wearing this. They are pretty cool. I wouldn't mind one. So yeah, I'm doing a robot voice for Lisa, even though she's not actually a robot, I just think it fits. So, what exactly is this firm's business? I will try to simplify it so that you can understand. We analyze the data management systems required by certain branches of industry, and then deliver optimum operating systems and source level components to them. Huh? You lost me on the corner of analyze and management. It doesn't matter. They analyze stuff. You got that much, right? The software we produce is distributed on CDs. CDs? Yes, compact disc, digital optical storage media. Wow, this is really outdated. Like, y you just, just use the internet now, right? Y you, don't, you don't usually have compact disc for anything. Of course, CDs are used for software as well as music. It is a small firm, but all of my employees are first-class programmers. Let's ask one of them what they are doing. Excuse me, what are you working on right now? I'm researching the impact of time slicing common areas and logical access to shared global variables. Obviously, program structure heavily influences response time and performance, so the codependence of global variables and memory overheads is vitally important to the success of the execution. Well, you get the idea. That actually made a decent amount of sense, to be honest. Like, it's not just Technobabble, so that was kind of cool. This is the sort of thing we are involved in. Did you good people follow all of that? Y y yeah. Your blank smile was set otherwise, Maya. You know about what happened, right, Miss Basil? You mean about Glenn being poisoned? Yes, I know. It's terrible. Can you tell us anything that might be helpful? I don't think so. A police officer was here earlier too. But I couldn't tell him anything either, because... The waitress who committed the crime has nothing to do with Blue Screens Incorporated. Oh. How about Mr. Elg's desk? Have you cleared it out already? No, not yet. It's this one, right in front of you. If there's anything that might be useful to you, you are welcome to take it. I guess there might be a clue here somewhere. There is. It's the horsey calendar. Whoa, look at this desk, Nick. What a mess. It looks pretty average to me. But you can't get any work done with everything all over the place like this. You think? Real whiz kids can work under any condition, you know. 
she's trying to hint that I should tidy my desk more. I'll clean up my desk when Maya stops asking silly questions. No hurry then. Hey, this calendar. What about it? This is another hint about tidying, you can forget it. Someone's marked December 3rd in red pen. December 3rd? That's the day Mr. Elg was murdered. Is there anything else? Yeah, um, it says, meet with the tiger. The t tiger Glenn's calendar out of the court record. I think that's the only thing we need to get here. There's some other stuff we can look at, but nothing of importance. Vitamin Square. January 7th, Vitamin Square. Or Vitamin Square. Hmm. I don't see any sign of Mr. Kudo, do you? Maybe he went to buy another ton of bird seeds. I was kind of hoping he wouldn't be here anyway, at least not for now. Besides, any more seeds today and I'm liable to turn into a real phoenix. Hey, check this out. I wouldn't get too close to that if I were you, otherwise you might be in for a shock. My phone must be lurking someplace nearby. Just imagine, a tiger, loose in the city. Meanwhile, the real phoenix is like an abandoned chick lost in a vast urban jungle. Huh? Don't worry, someday you'll grow up and become a ferocious tiger too. Don't lose hope. Why is she trying to pep talk me into becoming my phony? This place is so fruity. That's not a bad thing. Besides, I love apples. They're among my favorites. Then that apple slide is perfect for you. And what is so perfect about it? Oh, come on. Don't be a stick in the mud. Slide down it a few times. Go on. Woo! No way. I get covered in sand if I slow down that slide. Anyone can see that. Yeah, you're right. Otherwise, I'd give it a try too. Uh, that wasn't important at all, you can probably tell. I don't think there's anything worth looking at here. Back to Trey Beyond. Uh, let me see. What do you think about this, Detective Gumshoe? Sorry, pal. I can't discuss anything to the case. Hey, I thought you said you were going to help us out. I can't help you out if I don't have any info. Yeah, I suppose the retrial's only just begun. I think we need to show the disc to Blue Screen Zinc. Uh, Lisa, do you... Oh, we don't have the disc. Oh, we have... We... This, maybe? Um, would you mind taking a look at this? No. No, this is, this is just the random, like, when you give someone the, something they shouldn't know about. Something that they don't know about, I mean. <laughs> um, actually, I should probably show you exactly what they say. Um, would you mind taking a look at this? I'm sorry, that data is super admin restricted desktop access password protected. Super admin restricted access password protected? What? This is madness. No, Maya, that is Sparta. She won't tell us unless we say the right code word. <laughs> A code word? Hmm. Sesame. If it's not Sesame, then it must be her mother's maiden name. That's how it always is. There's no point in having a password if it's always the same thing, Maya. I guess she just doesn't want to talk about this. Hey, we should focus on asking about Glen Elg. What do you say? I think we can present Glenn's profile for some more info. Um, about Mr. Elg. He was a top programmer. I would even say he was a genius. But he did suffer from one or two bugs in his personality. Oh? Like what? He was a bit of a loser. Perhaps that would be the best way to describe it. That's what got him into trouble. What's the matter? He was a top programmer. I would even say he was a genius. So he was really no trouble at all. A model employee. Hey, wait a minute. Just now you said something about him being in trouble. We've got to find out what this trouble was exactly. Um, about Mr. Elg. Was he in some kind of trouble? I'm sorry, 
Why would you think that? I thought you said something about it just now. You said he got himself into trouble because he was a bit of a loser. <gasps> Psyche locks. Three Psyche locks? I guess Mr. Elg is like every other man with his own pile of secrets. We may have enough to open this already. Let's give it a try. Let me just have a quick flip through here. Glenn's troubles. So, how about you tell me what kind of trouble Mr. Elk was in? I'm sorry, sir, but we don't deal with troubleshooting here. Perhaps you'd like to speak to someone in customer service. What's she talking about? I guess I better just take a shot and see where it gets me. Miss Basil, let me ask you something. Did Mr. Elk's troubles have something to do with this? I think it's to do with the calendar? No. Well, what do you think? I'm not sure. Let's ask one of the programmers. Excuse me, can you answer this man's query, please? The data queue that manages system tasks for troubleshooting requires that a multitasking simulation for local variables put to sleep mode the data terms which are active nodes can be bundled correctly according to the source code. Obviously. So I'm afraid that is the situation you see. Did you good people follow all that? Not even slightly. What was all that mumbo jumbo? It's exactly as my programmer explained. I'm guessing I picked the wrong piece of evidence there. Yeah, that wasn't right. Would you like to input another question? Uh, I think I don't have the information I need yet. Yeah, let's go get some more. I think we need to go uh, to the cops. I know, disgusting. January 7th, Police Station, Criminal Affairs Department. Looks like Gumshoe's not here. Never mind that. What's going on? It feels different in here somehow. You think? Yeah, everyone seems to be on edge. What are you doing? Call in the officers for the briefing, quick! Can't you shut down the station's server? Chief, quit playing on the internet. But my email pen pal. Uh, late, late Asian princess, I think. Yeah, I think that's how it is. Late Asian princess. Save it for later. I'm turning it off now. No, late Asian princess. Everyone's keeping busy in here, huh? Keeping busy? I'm like panicking, if you ask me. Something's going on. Something big. This must be the chief of the detectives here. He looks lost now that the power of his computer has been cut. Oh well, I guess I'll just have to write a real letter instead of an email. Alternately, you could write up some reports. Just a suggestion. Dear Lead Asian Princess, how are you? I'm okay. How was the show last night? Wow, what an awesome job. Maybe I should send in my resume and become chief. Uh, can I talk to you about it? That must be one of the detectives. He's mumbling something to himself. Even pickpockets can have their pockets picked. That's a keeper. Better to go with something that doesn't sound too much like a slogan. He must be coming up with slogans for a crime prevention campaign. But I'm not sure even he knows what kind of crime he's trying to prevent. Okay, um... We need to know what's going on here, but I don't think they're going to tell us just yet. We may need to come back later. As it happens, I do know what's going on, but it's, you need to find out before it'll let you progress. So, um... Can I ask Gumshoe about it? I don't think I can. That's the sports paper the victim wrote something in, right? What is it? I know I've heard that name somewhere before. MC Bomber. Yeah, I heard it real recently, too. Wow, he actually seems to be thinking for once. Ah, it's no good, I can't remember. 
And he goes back to being the gumshoe we all know and love. Okay, so yeah, MC Bomber is what's important here. We need to get more information about that if we can. Uh, but I forget how. He's really pounding that keyboard, isn't he? Wow, I bet that's where the pro in programmer comes from, huh? I guess I shouldn't be resting on my laurels. Gotta expand my skill set and all that. Yeah, that's a good idea. Maybe I could become old CD's apprentice. Um, and what about your spirit medium training? Uh, that's the same thing, even though I looked, picked a different person. Uh, at least- oh, here we go. Wow, look at this mess! Looks like they're all betting tickets. What kind of betting tickets? For betting on which horse will win a given race. They're horse racing tickets. Oh wow, his drawers are stuffed full of these. Looks like they're all losing tickets, though. Yeah, this, this is what I need. Glen Elves losing horse race tickets gathered up. This many tickets would get you, what, a buck down at the recycling center? But I didn't know you were so hard up that you'd try to profit from the dead, Nick. I'm just taking them as evidence, Maya. Okay, yeah, we need to try to break that lock again, now that I've remembered you have to grab the tickets. <laughs> just gonna do a little bit of a fast forward because you saw this already. Something to do with all of these lottery tickets. What is that? A bunch of horse racing tickets, all losing ones. With that many tickets, you could get one dollar at the recycling center. You good people are very, very bad. Cashing in on others' misfortunes is immoral. Is that a whiff of hypocrisy I smell? But what is the relevance of these tickets? The victim, Mr. Glen Elg. He had a gambling habit, didn't he? Sorry, he had a gambling habit, didn't he? I don't think that's a logical conclusion based on the facts. Everyone likes to go to the races from time to time. Yeah, but not everyone buys this many tickets. Anyway, I don't believe that proves anything on its own. You're right, but I'm not through yet. Mr. Elg's gambling wasn't restricted to horse races, was it? Well, he also played the lottery. The lottery, horse racing, he bought a lot of tickets and lost a lot of times. That's got to have hurt his wallet pretty bad, don't you think? Maybe bad enough to be the cause of some pretty serious trouble, perhaps? No! You are right, Glenn did have a gambling habit. You good people must not follow his example, do you understand? Trust me, even if I wanted to, I don't exactly have the money to buy any. But, if you win, there's no problem, is there? And Glenn had a winning ticket, didn't he? For half a million dollars? Yeah, but... It's hard to imagine how he could have been in trouble then, isn't it? It's true that Mr. Elg won half a million dollars, in the end, but that was his first stroke of good luck. He was in deep trouble before that. Deep trouble? What do you mean? Mr. Elg's real problem was with someone or something more terrifying and ferocious. Uh, I think I can just present the calendar? Mr. Elk met with someone the day he was killed. He even made a note on this calendar about the meeting. Meet with the tiger. What is the relevance of that? Are you trying to suggest Glenn was meeting him to discuss his debt? Y yeah, that's what I'm thinking. But I've never heard anything about this tiger before. Maybe he's not even human. Maybe he really is a tiger. I'm no programmer, but does she really expect me to buy such messed up logic? In that case, I think it's time to introduce you to the tiger. I, I don't have him in my profiles yet, so I, I have to stop. Damn it. <laughs> need, we need more information. Again. Um, let's try going back here. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's anything we can do here yet. Hmm. 
examined the bike already. What am I supposed to do next? Hmm. Apparently everyone's listening to the show now. That's because everyone wants money. They say that the victim, Glenn Elg, was really into gambling. Yep, you can't beat gambling. I love it too. I won $500 last night playing cards with Nick. Huh? We were playing for money? Of course. So you better pay up. You're a smart one. Waiting for a cock to be present before asking for the cash. Oh my god. Fuck cops. Um... Hey, are you putting this up for sale, pal? N no Why? Would you want a busted up scooter like this anyway? Yeah, plus the seat's all covered in pigeon poop. Who cares? If it runs, that's all that matters to me. My phony was riding this bike. Maybe if I head back to the park, it'll be there again. I mean, yeah, it is there. We went to the park and it was there. See? I'm a little stuck. <laughs> that lady is the boss of Blue Screens Incorporated, pal. Yeah, I figure she's clean. She's got nothing to hide. She seemed kind of like a doll to me. In a good way, in a bad way. Kind of makes you think she might be hiding something. <laughs> hmm. Um... I am not sure what to do at this point. This must be the table where the murder occurred. I guess so, with all this police tape all around it. And that stain must be from the poisoned coffee. Don't go licking the tablecloth, okay Maya? Why would I lick it? I'm not a cat, you know? Then why can I picture you doing just that? I think she's a cat. <laughs> it's a rack full of fashion magazines, and they're all in French. Why don't you try wearing something a bit more chic sometime, huh, Maya? Yeah, I'd look stunning in some of these Parisian frocks, huh? Mmm, that was just flavour. Um, what am I missing? You know what that chef said to me? Oh la la, your body is full of la toxins. And then he gave me this. And then he gave me this bottle. What's in it? I don't know. The label says Juniper. But I'll tell you what. This stuff works like a charm. I slept like a rock last night. Oh, really? That's nice. Well, that wasn't helpful at all. Um... Oh, we can go to the kitchen. There's something in the kitchen. January 7th, Trey Beyond Kitchen. Huh? Mr. Armstrong's talking to someone. Oh, there she is. I'll be back next month. Oui, naturalement. Naturalement, I'll be waiting for you. If you haven't got it by then, I'm afraid it might get a little... hot around here. Non, I will have everything ready, I promise. I love by, you know? I love the way it crackles. <laughs> non, non, non! Stop it! I beg you! Then don't let me down. I'll be watching you. Mace, non! This is not necessary! You can trust me, mademoiselle! Talk to anyone, and I'll drive a knife right through your heart. Oh, non! You don't have to worry. You know, you worry far too much. Maybe this will help you relax. It is the oil of sandalwood. I do love raw meat from time to time. <laughs> ah. I'll be taking my leave. Goodbye. For now. Ugh. I have the shivers. I must rub some of my oil all over my body before I become the nervous wreck. There. Oh, wee oui, wee. Oui. That feels good. Ugh. 
Oh la la, excuse moi, monsieur. M my eyes, my eyes. Your eyes? You have trouble with your eyes. You need this, the oil of sandal. Isn't this just the leftovers of what you were just using? Okay, we just met someone very important. And she's not in our profiles yet. But we need to talk to this guy. You don't exactly have many customers, do you, Mr. Armstrong? Non, you are right, Monsieur. But perhaps that is the perfect time for you to visit me, Non? That way I can give you my undivided attention and cook for you la dish supreme. Putting on a brave face, huh? That's what girls do, Nick. But you were right. Business is very difficult these days. Perhaps the name is the problem. People don't understand it. They think it is Trey. I just wanted people to think that my restaurant was exclusive. But they think you just serve fast food on cheap plastic trays? Nick, that's the kind of thing that can make a girl cry. Have you forgotten that Mr. Armstrong is a man, Maya? Yay, shitty gender stuff. Yay. But this restaurant is my life. It is everything to me. I will defend it till the finale. No one will take it from me. So, who was that woman you were just talking to? Oh la la, you saw that? Uh, well, yes, sorry. So, who was she? She looked so polite and graceful. P polite? G graceful? And she likes raw meat and fires, right? I'll be back next month. We oui, natural element here, we just, we just saw this. Like, seconds ago. If you haven't got it by then, I'm afraid it might get a little... hot around here. Non, I will have everything ready, I promise. Now that I think about it... Hey, Maya, I think it's pretty clear what kind of conversation they were having. You think so? Well then let's show them that piece of evidence and see what happens. It's this one. So as long as that paper exists, I am a delightful angel with the broken wings. An angel, huh? Doesn't bode well when you think about it. We oui, they kept harassing me month after month. In the end, I had to give in. I agreed to help them. Help them? With what? May Spencer, if I did not owe them the money, I would have refused. But my hands were tied. Please, what did you agree to help them with? None. I, I cannot say. If I tell you, that woman, she will slice me up. And eat me with the salad garnish. Ew, I hope he doesn't mean that he'll literally be sliced up and served with garnish. I'm gonna guess that woman has something to do with your loan contract, am I right? Ah! Please, Mr. Armstrong, tell us about that woman. The woman who was here earlier, I take it that she's, um... Why has it come to this? What a tragedy. Suddenly I find myself so deep in la dette. It's a sign of la bad, bad world we live in, huh? No, I'd say it's more of a sign of la bad, bad culinary skills. The woman who was here. It's a scary woman. She is from the loan office. Loan office? Is that where you borrowed half a million dollars from? Oui, tender lender it is called. Catchy name. Just hearing it makes me want to borrow some money. Please, you must not borrow from them. If you must, no more than ten dollars. Ten dollars? Sounds like your whole monthly stipend, Maya. Maya. Hey, I get a bit more than that, thank you very much. So, Tender Lender is the loan officer she borrowed half a million from, huh? I wonder if they've got anything to do with this case. I am a weak woman. When I am upset, I have to buy something nice to cheer me up. Okay, so so is is Armstrong like like by gender or something, or what exactly is happening? <sighs> Thanks to him loading me low money, I have to pay back half a million dollars now. I am I am like his slave. I have to do everything that he tells me. Um, who's this he? The tiger. The tiger? Oui, he is the manager of the tender lender, a terrifying man, the big city mobster. When he shouts at me, my knees are trembling and his voice is ringing in my ears for three days. As soon as I hear the noise of that battered old scooter he rides, I start to cry. A big city mobster who rides a battered old scooter? 
Um, does this guy resemble me by any chance? Oh, no, no, no. This man has a presence, a most formidable personality. Although... Wait, oui, he does have a spiky hair just like you. Wait, oui, there is a resemblance there, I suppose. Hmm... Sounds like this loan office is worth checking out after all. If you want to visit the Tender Lender, it is just beyond Vitamin Square. Hey, Nick. If you need money, I can loan you some, as long as it's less than three dollars. Um, thanks for the offer. Just beyond Vitamin Square, huh? Okay, we can now go to Tenderlender, which is, as you might guess, very important. Well, I'm gonna head back to the precinct now. We've got a big meeting starting in a bit. About Maggie's case, you mean? No, that's pretty much wrapped up now. There's another big case going down at the moment, so she's been pushed aside. Okay, well, see you later then. Bye! You better get going, Detective, or you'll be late. Actually, I am... Um, I've kind of got a favour to ask. It's a big one. A favour? Yeah, it's for, um... Maggie, actually. I was kind of hoping... You'd give this to her for me? What is it? It's lunchbox. I got up early so I could make it. I've been real worried about her. She looked like she'd lost a lot of weight. Detective Gumshoe. How many wings are in here? There's not a person on earth could down this much meat. You think? I love weenies. I'm <laughs> getting off of their tender juiciness. So will you give it to her? It took me ages to make, so please say you will, pal. I can't exactly say no, can I? Gumshoe's lunchbox given to Maya to carry. Maybe I'll eat it myself if I get hungry. Don't forget, okay? I'm counting on you to give that to Maggie. He's finally gone. Okay, let's go to Vitamin Square. Let's go to Tenderlander. January 7th, Tenderlander. This place gives off a really strange vibe, doesn't it? Looks like the tiger isn't in his lair. And that is, as they say, a very good thing. Welcome. Oh. Talk about a creepy voice. It makes your soul want to shrivel up and die. You're here... to discuss a loan? Uh, no, not exactly. The manager is away at the moment. Wait quietly, please. She's gone, just like that. I guess we'll just have to come back another time. This is the perfect opportunity, Nick. This place reeks of suspicion. Come on, Nick, let's take a look around, okay? Do you think it'd be okay? Of course. No one will ever know. Coffee? Ah! I'll leave it here for you to enjoy. Quietly. Yes, thank you. Do not touch the desk, please. N Nick, let's g get out of here. Now she wants to get out of here. Okay, uh, as you might guess, this is a very important place. Let's have a look around. Oh no, someone's dropped the ashtray on the floor. That's gonna be a nightmare to clean up. Yeah, it's all over the rug and everything. I accidentally knocked over a really big space heater once. Cleaning up was such a pain. It was one of those super antiques where you have to burn a ton of charcoal. How did she manage to knock one of those over? Aren't they supposed to be super heavy? Oh hey, there's a book of matches here too. Matches, huh? Places don't give those out much nowadays. Hey, wait a second. What is it? Look what's printed on its cover. It says Trey Beon. Trey Beon matches added to the court record. These matches could come in handy. We might be able to use them. Yeah, the pilot light for the office boiler keeps going out. Swing and a miss, Maya. Swing and a miss. Uh, we also care about this disc here. There's a CD player on the desk, but the desk is so loud it's a wonder you can hear it. The lid's open. I wonder what kind of music the tiger's into. Have you finished... the coffee? 
Ah! Y yes, thanks. It was lovely. So, you drank it all? <laughs> if you touch anything else that doesn't belong to you, there's always another cup. That coffee. It, it was laced with something. I'm almost sure of it. Nick, my stomach. It's killing me. Oh, wait. Maybe it was just the burger I ate for breakfast. Uh, I sure hope so. We better take a look at that CD while we're still alive and have the chance. What the? What? It's not the Rocco soundtrack, is it? Claw of the Tiger? It's... it's a demo CD. The artist's name has been handwritten on the disc in pen. MC Bomber. What? This must be the CD Maggie told us about. Let's listen to it. I bet it's heavy metal. No way. That woman will make us drink more coffee if we do. MC Bomber added to the court record. Oh my. Uh, let's see. This round doll thing is called Daruma, I think. Daruma? I figured I'd read a book or two and be more cultured in case you're wondering. You mean you aren't making stuff up for a change? <laughs> I bet you also didn't know that no matter what, he'll always ride himself. Go on, Nick. Give him a good shove. Only if I feel like dying. Now, this yellow thing. This is a Japanese chess piece. I think it's a king? Not that I'm an expert or anything. I'm more of a reversey person, you know? Assuming she knows what she's talking about, these aren't exactly your typical mobster wannabe items. They're not trophies, are they? Oh. Hey. There's a piece of paper sticking out from under here. What is it? A repair bill? Looks like he did some repair work on his car. Does he even have one? 15,000 dollars to replace a bumper and a light? That's insane! The car's registered to... the Cadaverinis. Huh? So it's not even the Tiger's car? Why would someone else's repair bill be in the Tiger's office? Repair bill, I just caught record. <laughs> uh, and this jacket. Hey, look at this Parisian style coat. It's so chic. Looks like more of a pimp coat to me. Because I haven't got an eye for fashion. Hey, look at this. This suit is the same colour as the one you wear, Nick. Hmm. The same colour as my suit? Ah! Keep your voice down, Maya. N Nick, you've got to take a look at this. Some cake? Ah! I'll just leave it here for you. Uh, yeah, sure, I am. Um, thanks. Just wait here quietly. Otherwise... Sh sure. Did you hear that, Nick? Wait quietly, she said. Y yeah, sure. I have my eye on you. Only so I can take care of you. Understand? Ah, I'm scared, Nick. So, what were you getting so excited about before? Look, on the lapel of this suit. That's... that's an attorney's badge. Is the tiger a lawyer? No way, look at this thing. It's made of paper. That's cardboard. Paper badge added to the court record. For some reason, your badge suddenly looks really cheap to me, Nick. Why doesn't anyone recognise an obviously fake badge when they see one? <laughs> ah. Come out from under the desk, Maya. What are you two snooping around in my office for? N nothing. We were just. Wah, my precious carpet. You've got ash on my rug. You're gonna wish your ugly face feet never came through my door. It wasn't us. It was already like that. You just wanna argue with me? Is that what you're doing? You dink yous can take me on? I'm gonna flatten yous two into pancakes and turn yous into my new rugs. Ah! Oh. Don Tigre, you're back. <laughs> that voice, it's like evil seeping into your head through your ears. 
I'm sorry, Don Tigre. I knocked over that ashtray earlier, and... Eek! She got a death wish or what? Oh, right. Huh? F forget about it, Violetta. It's nothing. What? 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 I ain't gonna get mad at you. You're too cute, you hear? That's so unfair. Here, have some cookies. I just baked them. And you'll need some strong espresso while you're discussing your loan. Wah! Wow, Phoenix right. Y yes? You's either crazy or just plain stupid to chase after me. I worked so hard, but now you's gotta come and mess up my plan. So it was him. He's my phony. Heh, <laughs> but I don't care. No one gets in my way. What? I mean, excuse me? <laughs> you should have left the little girl at home, right? Um, I have a few things I want to ask. Ah! No questions. This is the last time we meet. Ack, wait, but please. That was pretty weak, Nick. You waited until he was out of earshot before you shouted after him. Like your one to talk, I didn't hear you scream, hold it, either. The espresso. Ah! And cookies. This woman is definitely not good for my heart. Now, what was it the tiger called her? Violetta? So, I'm kind of curious about your company, Tenderlender. With the warm and friendly atmosphere you'd expect from a family-sized business, a conscientious rate of interest, and an attractive repayment policy, why do I get the feeling the sentence is not going to end well? We will tenderly lend you that little bit extra here at Tender Lender. Hey, Nick, things are a bit tight for Right and Co at the moment, aren't they? I mean, there's that $500 you owe me from our card game for starters. Why don't you take out a loan? Would I like to take out a loan for a place like this? Not so much. Tender Lender is on your side. <laughs> so, um, let's say I'm late with my repayment. What happens then? We'd give you more coffee. Strong coffee. Um, right. I think I'd rather skip town. Hey, just remember I can make strong coffee too, Nick. Strong tea as well. So, um... Do you know about the incident we're investigating? What incident? Well, a man was poisoned in a restaurant just near here. That incident. Let me see. I was here that day with the manager. The manager being the tiger? Furio Tigre. Furio? T Tigre? So that's where the tiger thing comes from. Then e has got a real name. Nick, hurry up and find out more about him. What do we know about her now? We only know that her name is Violetta. Can I ask you about the tiger? I mean, Mr. Tigre? Cookie? S sure. How do you like my cookies? I baked them myself. He, he, he. Go ahead, Nick. The honor is all yours. No, no. Ladies first, Maya. <laughs> no matter how I look at this, I just don't get it. What are the tiger and this scary girl doing working together? We... are lovers. That's not exactly coming across in your tone of voice. And I owe Don Tigre my life. He's the one who saved me. The tiger? Saved you? Please address him properly as Don Tigre. Otherwise, I'll have to. Okay, okay, Don Tigre, of course, I'm sorry. He saved her life? I'd sure like to know how that happened. I'm very frail, you see. Just recently, I died once. <laughs> you d died? About four months ago. The doctor said to abandon all hope. I guess they were expecting her to take a boat ride across the River Styx. But Don Tigre, 
You saved me. You gave up everything. Everything? When I found out what he had done for me, I was happy. No offense, but I'm finding that a little hard to believe. I decided I'd pay him back with my life by serving him coffee and espresso. I still wonder about what's in her coffee. So, is that why you've got that bandage around your head? He he he. This? Um, so what's the story with the bandage? They put it on after the operation. Operation? It's just a little injury. A little fatal injury. He he he. A f f fatal injury? I might have suffered one herself by the sound of it. So that's the injury you were talking about before when you said you had died once? <gasps> Maybe it wasn't. Ugh, she really creeps me out, Nick. Same here, but we've got to find out the truth. Uh, I think before we can get the truth out of her, we need to get some more information elsewhere. January 7th, Vitamin Square. There he is, old Seedy's back, feeding the pigeons again. There, take this, and this, and get out of my park. Like I thought, he's really mad. Come on, Maya, just keep your head down and let's sneak away while we still can. What? Why? Hello, old man. What are you doing, Maya? Huh? Gah. Hey, he just turned his back on us. I'm not surprised. I bet I really heard his pride in court this morning. Hey, Mr. Kudo! Hmm, ha, hmm, 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 p, -p pigeon hmm, gah. <laughs> Look, we really need to talk to you, alright? Out with the demons, in with good fortune. Ow, 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 seeds, shell splinters, painful. I always knew you were a demon, Maya. Rude. Uh... I don't think we actually need to talk to him. We want to go back to Blue Screens, Inc. And... Have another shot at this. Something to do with his lottery tickets. Here they are. Losing horse races a lot, but also he played the lottery as well. There we go. Uh, yeah, we saw this already. Someone or something much more terrifying and ferocious. This guy. Furio Tigre, the boss of a loan office called Tender Lender. Tender lender? People with businesses should think harder before naming their officers. Like you're one to talk. Well, what do you think? Our firm is doing very well at the moment. I don't think we need to borrow money. No, no, no! I meant about Mr. Elg. You think Glenn had something to do with this Furio Tigre? Yes. I'm sorry, I don't know of any connection between the two of them. Really, because I've got proof that Mr. Elg and the Tiger knew about each other. Sorry, knew each other. It's the calendar! Take that! Furio Tigre, aka the Tiger, is the boss of a loan office called Tender Lender. This is who Mr. Elg met with on the day of his murder. And the only thing a loan shark would talk about with him, talk with him about would be his be his debt. No. It's true that Glenn had racked up quite a bit of debt from his gambling habit. About a hundred thousand dollars, I think. A hundred thousand dollars? Ouch! But I heard he won the lottery, so he should have been in the clear. Shame Maggie couldn't get a bit of that good luck. Okay, so the guy got lucky and won the lottery. But what if he hadn't won? What was his plan then? Well, this isn't easy to say, but... He said he would use his talents to repay the money. His talents? I suspect he was talking about programming. What computer program is worth $100,000? Perhaps you good people should leave so I can get back to my work. I'm so close to cracking her. The program in question, 
Was it by any chance this? Uh, that it is. That is what it is. I must have presented the wrong piece of evidence, but that is the correct answer. This is a very delicate matter. Without the necessary data, there's really no way I can access the information. <sighs> okay, I, I, I just need to prove that that disc is actually MC Bomber before I can present it here. Even though I know it's MC Bomber. This is frustrating. Uh, I think I need to go back to the Criminal Affairs Department? Uh, no? I'll try the detention center? No? Um... There's no one here. Kitchen again, maybe? I already spoke to you about everything. Well, I can ask about these people now. Does that help me? Um, about this. Felicitations! Mas, quasso, I don't know how to read that. I can't French. Je... Je no comprehend. Nick, don't just make something up. Okay, if I ask him about either of these people, he doesn't seem to know about them, even though he clearly knows about them. So that's a bit weird. Um... What's this? It looks like a treasure chest or something. Wow, look at all these little, little bottles. Oh, the aromatherapy oils. It's got so many, they're overflowing onto the floor. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 98, 9, 100. They're all the same, too. Oh, I thought I might actually get one as part of the evidence, but no, it's just flavor. Um, okay, yeah, let's talk to this guy. Um, I'm sorry about what happened in court earlier today. Ah, everyone will be talking about me behind my back now. A dirty old man who was so busy looking at the serving girl's backside that he can't remember her face. A filthy, depraved animal. N not at all. Are you listening to me, boy? I don't care what you say. I saw that waitress put it in. She put some white powder into the young lad's javachino. We hear you. And another thing. The young layabout was wearing an earpiece. On the same side as the lens of his broken spectacles. Oh, we're really sorry. So I made a little mistake about the vase, so what? I know what I saw. I tell you, I tell you, I tell you. Okay, okay, take it easy, please, Mr. Kudo. Don't tell me to take it easy, you spiky-haired brat. Take this! Um, you said you were a craftsman, right? Ha! Ah, the modern world casts honest craftsmen like me aside in droves. Surely it's not that... I come from a long line of craftsmen. Right back to the time of the showgirls. Do you hear me? I didn't become an embroiderer, I was born one. Actually, I'm kind of in the same situation myself. I, I, I wanted to stick my fingers up that dribbling old judge's nose and scream right down his ear hole. Objection! Oh, so did you want to become a lawyer when you were young? I don't think that's quite it, Maya. I think he's just in a bad mood, that's all. I've got a tsunami of frustration inside, and it's ready to burst out. To let him start rambling now, I might never shut him up. What should I do? I think we need to let him ramble. Guess I better let him talk. So, there's not much call for craftsmen these days, then. Of course not, you idiots. All I'm good for nowadays is running errands. Errands? Everyone takes advantage of the elderly. Buy some bread, Gramps. Take the dog for a walk, Grandad. Feed the pigeons, old man. What am I, some sort of two-bit community handyman? Um, well... Buy some bread. Now that I can understand. But what's the point of feeding some seedy pigeons? Why don't people say what they mean? Get lost, that's what they're trying to say. Oh yes, I'm just an inconvenience, you see. At home, at that restaurant, I just get in the way, don't I? But uh, I'm sure you don't. Wait a minute, what did you just say? At home and at that restaurant? Hold up, by restaurant, are you talking about Trey Beyond? Did you get asked to run an errand there too? Yes I did, the very day that young brat was poisoned. What? So on the day of the incident, what were you asked to do? Glad you asked, boy, because I'll tell you what I was asked to do. All of a sudden that young lad slumped over the table. The serving girl collapsed. 
and I broke that vase. It all happened so fast, I was in a bit of a daze, you see. Then the owner shouted over to me. Excusez-moi, you, call the police. Call them yourself, I should have said back, but I didn't think of it at the time. So, did you end up calling the police? Like I said, I was in a bit of a daze. Did you call them on your cell phone? God, do I look like I'd have one of those newfangled thingamajigs? I went out looking for a payphone, of course. You went looking for one? I couldn't find one right away, you know. Wandered around for five minutes or so. F five minutes? So for five minutes after the incident happened... Yes, sorry, the owner was at Trebian on his own. Why didn't you mention this in court this morning? Well, I would have if you'd given me the chance. But you all bullied me out of the courtroom. <sighs> Thank you, Mr. Kudo. You've certainly earned your kudos for today. Wait, wait a minute, that's the case. There's more. I've got more to say. Oh, yes, I remember something else. Bailiff, escort the witness out of the courtroom. It's not my fault. You're the ones to blame. You could have at least told us before we got to court. Is it really that important that Mr. Kudo was the one who called the police? What's important is the unaccounted time before the police arrived. The victim was dead, and Maggie was unconscious. Which leaves that woman, I mean, that man, fuck you, alone in the restaurant. <sighs> Shitty gender stuff. Mr. Kudo might have been chased out of the place on purpose. What do you mean? Maybe a certain someone didn't want him in the restaurant. Ah. Oh sure, you go ahead and say I was in the way as usual. I suppose I should have been getting myself covered in pigeon poop instead, hmm? We need to get more details about what exactly happened from Maggie and from Mr. Armstrong. Maggie's here now. Okay. Can proceed with the with the investigation. Oh, Mr. Wright. Hello, Maggie. So they finished questioning you? Wasn't it just unbelievable in court today, sir? I'm gonna stay up all night and blog about everything that happened. Weren't you scared? It was pretty touch and go in there. Yeah, but you totally nailed that old man. Well, he was all over the place with his testimony. He's not the only one. Huh? What do you mean? Everyone else's testimonies don't match up either. Not with what I remember of the incident anyway. Is it possible she is the one misremembering things? Maggie, you know how you said that everyone else provided testimony that doesn't match up with what you remember? Yup, there are just so many things that don't seem to add up. The biggest contradiction is the other guy I saw at the victim's table. He was the one who slipped something into the victim's coffee. I'm sure it was him. But didn't Mr. Kudo testify earlier today? That it was the waitress who put some white powder into the coffee cup? So you really think it was this, this, this disappearing man that did it? Well, he's not the only thing that disappeared. The CD vanished as well. You know, the CD with the writing on it. Oh yeah, the MC Screwdriver album, right? It was MC Bomber, Maya. That name was scrawled on the sports paper as well. They never did find that CD at the crime scene, sir. Or the victim's medication. That's gone missing too. Ouch, my head. It's getting way too complicated for me. You said that you passed out when the victim, Glenn Eld, collapsed, right? Yes, it's so embarrassing. I mean, I used to be a cop. I'm so glad you're not a cop anymore, babe. I love you. When I came to, the restaurant was buzzing with police. Ugh. And before I knew what was going on, they arrested me, sir. Hey, cab. So between the time the victim collapsed and the time the police arrived on the scene, you have no idea what went on at Trey Beyond. No, no idea at all. Why? Is it important, Mr. Wright? The other witness, the old man from the park, was pretty much chased out of the picture. Chased out of the picture? What do you mean? Old said he wasn't inside the restaurant because he was told to go call the police. Exactly. And you, Maggie, were unconscious. That means Mr. Armstrong was alone in the restaurant for a brief period of time. 
No. Y you don't think Mr. Armstrong set me up, do you? When you consider the facts, it's hard to imagine that Mr. Armstrong isn't involved in this at all. Urgh. It's like the master biting the paw of the dog that it feeds. Are you sure about this, Mr. Wright? Well, the old man said as much when we spoke with him earlier. I don't know, the things that man says don't add, don't add up for some reason, sir. Maggie looks like she's trying to figure something out. Maybe we should ask Maggie exactly what she knows about old Seedy. Uh, where is he? This guy. <laughs> I feel much better after the trial this morning. I've been a bit of a courtroom proceedings addict for years now. It feels like forever since I saw a witness as slippery as that old man. He's not really that bad of an old man, though. Still, I feel a bit uneasy. Huh? I thought you just said you felt much better. Maggie, if there's something on your mind, you've got to tell us. Especially if it has anything to do with Mr. Kudo or his testimony. Roger, I'll spill it all and see what you make of it. Is there anything about Mr. Kudo's testimony that stood out as odd to you? Actually, yes. The fact that he was even testifying to begin with doesn't quite... Doesn't quite... what? Well, when I took the coffee over to the victim's table... It's true that there was another customer in the restaurant. Yeah, we know that already. It was Victor Kudo. But I can't really say it was an old man. Okay, then how about calling him a really old middle-aged man? No, age isn't the issue. The other customer was a woman. A woman? Are you sure, Maggie? Well, I'm not 100% sure, but I think so. So what did this woman look like? Um, she was sort of creepy, and she had a kind of cackling laugh. Creepy? Cackling? Why do I get the feeling I've come across a woman like that recently? Oh. I know I used to be on the police force, sir, but I'm incarcerated now, so I can't use my connections to help you. All I can tell you about now is info about ex-cons or the clientele of Trey Beyond, sir. Oh, don't let it get you down, Maggie. Okay, so actually showing her... Uh, Viola doesn't actually help. Um, we'll get to that. Uh, we don't need to come here yet. We will need to go there to find out about MC Bomber, I'm pretty sure, but it's just not happening. Kitchen. January 7th. Trey Beyond. Kitchen. Looks like Mr. Armstrong's out again, but the place is open for business. You can't have an open restaurant without a chef. Hey, it's not my fault, Nick. Don't take it out on me. Only a couple of minutes after the incident happened, Mr. Kudo left the scene, leaving Mr. Armstrong here alone. Ugh, missing when we need to talk to him the most. Maybe he's trying to avoid us on purpose. I uh, don't think there's any clues in here. We spoke to you already. Anything else we can ask Maggie about? Ah, is that your attorney's badge? Actually, it's a fake. Holy smokes, that's it! Huh? That's the badge your phony had, Mr. Right? You got duped by this? But it's a completely different colour. And what about the fact that it's made of paper? You said the badge got a tan as well while he was in Hawaii on business. I'm beginning to see how my phony was able to gain her trust. Holy smokes, that's him! Huh? That's your phony, Mr. Wright. Just look at that ridiculous suntan. Um, for the record, I'm not sunburned like an overdried tomato, so I don't know how... He told me he'd been on a business trip to Hawaii, and that's where he got the tan. I'm not hearing this. Yeah, you meant to read those in the other order. Uh, but it doesn't make sure you do, for some reason. Uh, can I ask her about anything else? The disc, maybe? No. Oh, the lunchbox, right. Oh yeah, I've got something you're gonna love. Really? What is it? 
A lunchbox, just for you. Here. Wow, a lunchbox. Weenies too. I can't believe it. Thank you, sir. Did you make this just for me, Mr. Wright? Nah, it was Detective Gumshoe. Who else would make such a nice lunchbox for you? Detective Gumshoe? He's really worried about you. Looks like he put a lot of effort into making this, too. I can't accept it. Detention center rules. No gifts allowed, sir. Hey, come on, Maggie. Don't be like that. The rules are the rules. I'll lock you up if you break them. Somehow, when an ex-cop turned waitress says that, it seems a whole lot scarier. And anyway, I hate weenies. Uh, oh, really? It's all yours, Maya. You can enjoy it with Mr. Wright. But... She's right. It's better than letting it go to waste. But... I guess so. Gumshoe's lunchbox eaten with Maya. Well, how was it? That hit the spot. I love weenies. Oh, good. I'm glad I gave it to you then, sir. Oh. I think that's all I had to do now. Yeah, okay, cool. January 7th, Police Station, Criminal Affairs Department. The main server just went up in smoke. Why the heck isn't the press conference set up yet? The superintendent's here already. Yeah, and there's a problem with the internet too. I already told you to stop using your computer, chief. But I'm watching videos online. I'm catching up on my Asian soap operas. It's gonna have to wait, chief. I'm throwing the switch. No, just when Sun some young guy was about to confess to his son's hot to trot girlfriend. Confess what? Wow, this place is really buzzing. Something must be going down. Something really big. Huh? Well, what are you doing here, pal? Detective Gumshoe! You can't be here right now. You'll be roped into the briefing if you stay. Huh? We've got big problems here today. Why? What's going on? It's a virus. A virus. A virus? There's a virus ripping through the precinct's computer system. But I really need to ask you some questions. Okay, I'm only going to say this once, so listen up. Y yes No matter how poor you get, never borrow money from a place like this, you hear? Um, okay. If you've got money, if you've got money trouble, just go on a diet of instant noodles and hang in there. Uh, we're not thinking about borrowing money, detective, we want information. Oh, is that all? Well, let's see. Tender lender is considered to be even fishier than the average illegal loan shark. And it seems it ran into trouble just recently. Those guys have been pretty heavy-handed calling in all of their debts. Really? Don't go poking your nose around in their business, pal. You'll really regret it if you upset that lady. Alright, I get the picture. Hey, wait a minute. What did you just say? That lady? Who's this lady he's talking about, Nick? It's probably Viola. I think I've done this investigation completely out of order somehow. We better find out what the story is with this lady. So what exactly is a computer virus, Detective Gumshoe? I don't know. What? Look, I just go with the flow, alright pal? And here I thought detectives were supposed to be somewhat knowledgeable. What's with that face, pal? You think you know what a virus is? Well, Nick, do you? A computer virus? Sure. I mean, only in simple terms, of course. Really? Wow, you know everything, Professor Nick. Yeah, I'm gonna call you Dr. Wright from now on. Hey, that sounds pretty cool. Don't you agree, Dr. Wright? Why do I get the feeling they're making fun of me? They probably are. <laughs> Okay, fine. I'm no expert, can I just explain the basics to the two of you? It's kind of weird to think about people not knowing what a computer virus is in the modern day. <laughs> it, it feels a bit dated. A, comp a virus is a program that gets inside a computer and causes damage. Damage? You mean it makes the machine go boom and explode? No, the damage is, um, well, it's all internal. So the inside goes boom, right? Imagine all the case data you've got stored in your PCs here on the station. A virus could wipe out all that. That's the kind of damage I'm talking about. Whoa, that's scary. Yeah, and what's even more scary is that viruses are infectious. Infectious? 
Most computers are connected together on a network, right? A virus can move from one machine to another over the network. So the virus just keeps spreading faster and faster. Hmm, just like a real virus, huh? But Nick, why would anyone want to make a program like that? Yeah, it takes ages to type in all that data. Why would you want to destroy it, pal? No, people don't infect their own machines and send the virus to someone else's. What? That's horrible. Oh, I get it. It's like he's sneezing on Mr. Gotto so he catches a cold. Right, and he wouldn't be able to turn up in court because he'd be too sick. You really shouldn't do stuff like that, Nick. It's wrong. Who? What? Where? When and why did the conversation jump to talking about me? Anyway, that's what a computer virus is. A bad program that causes damage. And all the different viruses have names, right? I kind of feel like I've heard the name of the virus we caught somewhere before. The name of the virus, huh? I feel like I've heard of it before too. I bet this is it. Detective Gumshoe, um, about this. What? I'm trying to concentrate on Maggie and this virus right now, so I... Ah! This is it, this stupid name, I remember now. I thought so. Here it comes. Don't just nod yourself and keep me in the dark, Nick. What's going on? It's okay, Maya. You don't have to cry about it. The name scribbled on that sports paper and written on that CD. That's the name of the virus, MC Bomber. What? Yeah, the virus has just infected every computer in the station, pal. It's MC Bomber. Can you give us any more, de any more details, please? We already knew about the MC Bomber virus from a while back. A group of criminals issued a series of demands to the head honchos of law enforcement. They threatened to release the virus if their demands weren't met. Who are they? I don't know. Some hotshots from the criminal underworld would be my guess. And now the virus has been released, huh? Yeah, it's in every computer in every public office in the city. Everyone's going nuts. They're hopping around like they're dancing in a carnival. All this stuff with criminals and viruses, it almost feels like we're in a sci-fi movie. Apparently the programmer who made the virus was a real genius or something. The focus right now is on tracing the route of this virus in the black market. You mean someone put this virus up for sale? Yeah, and because this one's so powerful, they're estimating its price tag was in the millions of dollars, pal. In the millions? A virus can be worth that much? MC Bomber updated in the court record. Okay, we now have the information we need to go to Blue Screens Inc. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Okay, his troubles had to do with the lottery tickets, which are on this page. Losing horse race tickets, yes, yes, yes. Also, this one. Some Something terrifying and ferocious, it's this man. They knew each other, which was proven by this horsey calendar. The program in question, was it by any chance... this? Well, this is it, isn't it? This is the virus that's infecting computers worldwide as we speak. MC Bomber. No. Yes, it is. Glenn's head had more processing power than any computer, but it had been infected with a gambling virus. Glenn was in too deep. You mean he was in debt? Yes, a hundred thousand dollars of debt, not an easy amount to repay. So, he said he was taking on some extra work, something a bit risky. Risky? How? Maybe he was going to become a waitress at Trey BR? Where do you come up with these ideas? So it's safe to say Mr. Elg was the creator of this virus, huh? 
The MC Bomber virus? Yes. It was a work of genius. In a bad sort of way, of course, but still genius. Something like that would probably fetch several million dollars on the black market. Inconceivable. Gumshoe was right for a change. This date, December 3rd, that is marked on his calendar. That was his deadline for repaying his debts. MC Bomber updated in the court record. I guess we won't be needing these horse racing tickets anymore. Glen Elg's losing horse race tickets thrown back on the floor. Use the trash can, Nick! Okay, so that's all we needed to get from her. Uh, I think now all we have to do is go break that other psych airlock and we can progress. You had a psych airlock, right? Yes. Oh, do I not have enough information? I'm not sure. Hmm. I might just see if I can talk to Mr. Armstrong first, but I think I can't. Yeah, I didn't think so. Okay. Well, let's just have make our way back. <sighs> Navigating between all those different places gets annoying. Uh, let's see. The head bandage. You said that bandage around your head was for an operation? You also said you suffered a fatal injury to the head, correct? Yes, the operation was very... difficult, apparently. Now, by fatal injury, you mean you were hurt very badly somehow, right? <laughs> Did the injury in question have something to do with this? Uh, I believe we have to present that car repair bill. I have here a car repair bill. From this, it seems pretty obvious that this car was involved in an accident. Let me see that. This bill is made out to... the Cadaverinis. Yes, it is. I don't think I have introduced myself. Tell me, what do the Cadaverinis have to do with me? Something tells me she's not about to say hi and introduce herself. Alright then. Your relationship with the... With the yeah. We, we need this information, we don't have it yet. Uh, so far we think her name is Violetta, which it's not. And we don't know how she's related to the Cadaverinis. <sighs> it's just a lot of running around. It's, it's very obnoxious. I believe we just have to ask Detective Gumshoe about her, and she'll tell us what we need to know. That's the girl who works over at Tender Lender. You want to stay away from her, okay? I mean it. She does look kind of unforgiving, doesn't she? That should be the least of your worries, pal. What's that supposed to mean? What could be worse? Her name is Viola Cadaverini. She's the only granddaughter of Bruto Cadaverini. Bruto Cadaverini? Do you know who that is, Nick? Never heard of him. Bruto Cadaverini is the boss of the Cadaverini family. The Cadaverinis? That's one scary sounding name. We can't touch them, they're way too powerful for the police. But you're thinking of taking them on, aren't you? N no, I don't remember ever saying I was going to. I better get some more info out of Gumshoe about this family. I'm not sure if I really want to get involved in this, but who are the Cadaverinis? Who are they? A scary bunch of people, that's who. You're a cop and you're scared? What's that about? Well, he's a fucking cop. Trust me, it doesn't matter if you're a kid or a cop, these guys are scary. Just like a cop, cops are fucking scary. They've got some serious clout in the criminal underworld. We can't touch them. They've got too much moolah. Moolah? As in, they pretty much control all the cash in the city's black market. The black market, huh? And that includes Tender Lender, I take it. Sure, no one stands up to Bruto Cadaverini, and I mean no one. Interesting. So Viola's the granddaughter of some mafia boss then? Yeah, and everyone knows how much Bruto loves his little girl. She means everything to him. So, how did she end up at Tender Lender? I don't know, pal. 
but I heard she and the boss of Tenderlander are pretty tight. Tight? That's what it said in the file I read related to Maggie's case. Sounds like a pretty important clue. Ah, I can't believe it. I almost forgot the most important thing. Uh, and that is? You know, the lunchbox. How did everything go? L lunchbox? You remember, the weenies? Uh, oh dear. I hate weenies. Oh yeah, those weenies. So, how did my weenies taste no one down the hatch? Huh? Um, well, it was delicious. Yeah, that's what she said? Really? Um, well, not exactly. Don't worry about it, pal. I figured something would happen, so I came prepared. Prepared? What do you mean? I made a jumbo lunchbox. Oh. Do me a favor again, huh, pal? And deliver this. This sure is a heavy burden, in more ways than one. I can just imagine Maggie's little eyes sparkling with joy when you bring her that. Weenies again, Nick? Tell me we don't have to eat all these too. Gumshoe's lunchbox given to Maya. Again. I really can't eat anymore. Maggie's not here, so I can't give her the lunchbox yet. Uh, let's go to... Visit Viola again, and... Now that we know who she is, we should be able... ...to discover the truth of what happened to her head. Hello, Viola. Okay, so first up, the car accident, so we need to present the bill from the repair. Then we present Viola, the granddaughter of crime boss Bruto Cadaverini. I know exactly who you are, Viola Cadaverini. You sustained that injury in a traffic accident, didn't you? It happened about four months ago. I was driving in one of our family's cars when someone pulled out in front of me. It was a motorbike or something like that. I don't remember it much. Anyway, I swerved to try to avoid it, but... I took a blow to the head. A bad one. Yeah, I can imagine. Ugh. So, what happened to the person on the bike? I'm guessing they didn't get away with injuring THE Viola Cadaverini, right? I don't know what happened to them. They ran away, or so I heard. Ran away? If they'd stayed, I'd have... <laughs> Is it possible? Could the person who committed the hit and run have been... It wasn't a hit and run. Like, it was an accidental, like, pulling in front of someone else's car. It's a different thing to a hit and run. It was this man, wasn't it? He was the cause of your accident. It wasn't Don Tigre. I refuse to believe it. We collided, the motorbike and my car. But Don Tigre isn't injured at all, is he? It was the tiger who caused Viola to crash. I can feel it. Plus, one of her locks just broke, so she must suspect it was him too. I'm sorry, Ms. Cadaverini, but I have proof that the tiger was involved in a traffic accident on his bike. Well, look at the bike, it's like, wrecked. It's not exactly a motorbike, but Mr. Tigre rides around on a scooter, doesn't he? And you'll notice that the front wheel guard is badly damaged. Miss Cadaverini, you know the truth, don't you? <laughs> this repair bill was paid by Furio Tigre. The Cadaverinis have known for ages who caused the accident, haven't they? It's possible. Perhaps... Somewhere inside me, I know that may be true. I knew it. But... Don Tigre still saved my life. The operation was very complicated. It was very, very expensive. How much are we talking? Very, very, very expensive. She seems kind of hesitant about giving me an actual figure. We should back off. 
Well, anyway, it was the tiger who paid for it, right? After I recovered, Don Tigre told me. He said he paid for the operation because he cared about me. I believe him. Really? But do you honestly believe that to be true? Do you want to know what I think? I think the reason he paid for the operation wasn't because of you, but someone else. Perhaps I shouldn't be saying this, but... Your grandfather, Bruto Cadaverini, controls a lot of dubious cash, right? And you are his beloved pride and joy. Sure, I don't know exactly how much the operation cost, but... If you weren't the granddaughter of Mr. Cadaverini, do you think Mr. Tigre would have paid the money? One million dollars. Four months ago, I was in a traffic accident. That's why I needed the operation. When I woke up, they told me it was nothing serious. A simple procedure. Oh, really? Well, I guess if she recovered in four months, it couldn't have been too big? They said the operation cost one million dollars. A, a, a million bucks? My grandfather ordered Don Tigre to pay. One million dollars. In compensation. Compensation, huh? It's underworld lingo for paying money to settle a score. Basically, pay or get into some serious trouble. But a million bucks? This has to be related to our poisoning case somehow. I wanted to believe him. I wanted to trust what Don Tigre said. He said it had nothing to do with my grandfather being Bruto Cadaverini. I wanted to believe he helped me because he cared about me, not about my grandfather. But I knew that wasn't really true. Wow, I'm so sorry. What he did to get the money was... it was... evil. He said it was all for me, so I... I helped him. You helped him? In what way? Here, take these. What are these? Medical papers? I'm Bruto Cadaverini's granddaughter. He had to pay compensation. He was made an offer. He simply couldn't refuse. The Ola's medical papers added to the court record. Wow, I feel so bad for Viola. It's inexcusable. Huh? There are two things that I consider inexcusable. Poisoning and betrayal. Only a coward would hurt people using either of these tactics. Is everything alright, Nick? We should get going. Right after we finish our espresso. Yeah. I won't need to convince Viola of anything else, so I guess I can get rid of this. Repair bill thrown into the trash. January 7th, Trebion. Hey, bonjour. I have been waiting for you to return. Mr. Armstrong. Ah, good timing. I was hoping to find you here. We'd like to ask you a few questions. Well, he hasn't got anything to say to you, fellas. Ah, it's Zinni Hop. Who you calling Zinni Oop? Ah! Come out from under the table already, Maya. Okay, hand it over. What? You just want to play games with me? I don't recommend that. The medical papers, now. Uh-oh. I think he wants Viola Cadaverini's papers back. You mean this? The million dollar medical papers? Ms. Cadaverini trusted you. That's why she said that she helped you. Forget about it. That girl's dumber than an eggplant. Yous want to know what's sad? I'll tell yous what's sad, and it ain't only her face. She thinks she's got power because she's Bruto's little girl. Now that's sad. I can't let you have these papers. Tomorrow in court, I'm going to expose what you did to get the one million you used to pay this off. Are you crazy or something? I don't care if you want to give it to me or not. There's two of us here. You got that. Two. 
Uh, we, oui, we, oui, we, oui. Mr. Armstrong. Forgive me, Desole. I cannot argue with him. Uh, ugh. That really hurt. Is that all you have got? I'll be taking those papers now. Armstrong, get that lighter. Wait. Don't take it too hard. Phoenix Wright. That was so stupid. I shouldn't have let my guard down. Those medical papers were vital evidence. Hold it, pal. D Detective Gumshoe? D Detective? You think you're gonna stop me, copper? Beat it. Gwah. Whoa. Come on, Gumshoe. Keep it together. You guys, get out of here. Leave this guy to me. B but go, pal, and take this. If you get hurt, who's gonna look after Maggie, huh? Uh, Alright. Thanks, Gumshoe. Wait, Nick, don't leave me behind. I'll get even with that guy tomorrow, in court. Tenderlender is going down. Oh gosh, what a video. Ugh, to be continued. So yeah, I forgot how to do this investigation segment and it took probably about a half hour longer than it should have. <laughs> it's still super long though. Next time, part 4-1 trial. Oh my goodness. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. You probably pretty much know exactly what happened at this point, based on the information you have. Um, but if not, you know, feel free to have a bit of a guess. Uh, next time, yeah, we're gonna lapse into the trial and solve all the mysteries once and for all, and hopefully bring some justice down on the, the jerk man, bad guy. Red Phoenix. <laughs> Bye.